Hi, my name's Neil O'Donnell. I'm here to talk to you about Kane and Lynch. Starting with Kane, Kane's a slightly misunderstood guy. He's uh, had a life as a mercenary. His face has got a few war signs on it. I won't go into too much detail about how this stuff occurs because I think it's fun to find out that when you play the game. Where well, Lynch is, is an even more interesting character. He's from uh, southern, the southern states of America and he, he's had a, a difficult life as well. He's on death row. Um, there was a an accident with his wife and nobody really knows what happened at that point in time. Uh, Lynch is medicated, he's a, he's, a, he's a schizophrenic. Sometimes you'll witness his, his um, personality come through in cut sequences but also very much in gameplay as well. So if you're, for example, if Lynch gets under too much pressure then you're, you're likely to see um, him start to sort of crave under that pressure and things even get, get even more interesting when he uh, starts to run out of medication. The idea with Kane and Lynch is to is to tell one constant narrative so that you shouldn't really get sort of sequences or, or periods of time that, that evaporate. The whole game should you should literally put the disc in, start playing, and then ideally we want people to, you know, just to play right through to the end. You, you just want to be kept kept into the story and really dragged along. This is probably one of the first games that's actually going to try try and tell that Hollywood story all the way through gameplay with very little interruptions for long and lengthy non-interactive cut sequences. Some of the more observant Hitman players would have noticed some of the, hit, some of the hints in the newspaper sequences towards Kane and Lynch, um, which we put in when we were making Hitman blood money. But there has been some discussion about, about sort of crossing over and things. It's, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a case of whether, whether the fans would be interesting if we did that and whether we've got a, a good enough idea that, that supports that. It, it, we don't want something to do something that's gimmicky. It needs to be... It needs to be strong enough in its own right, but yeah, I'd quite like to play like a Hitman versus Kane and Lynch. <laughs> the, the engines um, moved on. It's always being developed. We've got like quite a large tech team that are always coming up with new features and things, but the main thing is it's a balance between um, sort of memory usage. Um, thankfully, the engine's very efficient with memory use, and if, we, if, if levels are constructed in a clever fashion, then it gives the available memory to have more objects in the world and more, more deformation and more states for those objects. So I think it's, it's not like in any means luck that it's turned out this way, it's just like clever design and some clever optimization as well. And a, a lot of the time the destructibility is down to you know, how long it takes. To, not only do you have to just make an asset, you have to kind of make a destroyed version of it as well. Well, there's no point having a game like this if you fire a gun, not having anything to destroy, you know, it's, it, needs to be, <laughs> it needs to be like that. We'd like to keep the um, achievements sort of as secretive as possible, but the guys have been through, like Microsoft have a lot of recommendations on the achievements and how they're allocated nowadays, because I think some of the first games out of, were either sort of gave them all away a bit too easy or, or you know, whether you can configure some sort of seven minute multiplayer game that gets you 500 points. And we're trying to, um, we're trying to allocate a good, good portion between sort of single player, co-op and multiplayer, and then making sure that they're, they're kind of interesting and slightly cryptic as well, rather than rather than just you know the standard kill ten thousand people, which is a slightly boring achievement. I think we'd rather have something that's more um, rec recognised as an achievement within the game. Mm -hmm. So, so for example, it might be interesting to try and complete a level without actually firing a single bullet yourself. Yeah. For example, that would be something a scenario that would be quite interesting for an achievement. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a split-screen cooperative mode with um, player one will take control of Kane and player two will take control of Lynch. Um, there's some differences to the single-player game in terms of um, how Lynch's behaviour is. So when you're playing the single-player game, obviously, Lynch will be, um, you will just witness his behaviour as a, you know, he's another a character within the world. But when the, the in a co-op co -op game, Lynch is obviously under the player control, so, so player two is gets to play as Lynch and he gets to play out some of um, Lynch's more delusional happenings. Mm -hmm.